Amen. You know, we've used him in the teaching here. We have been tremendously blessed. We thank you for the gift that you have given him. And we continue to give you glory and honor and praise. Father, as he surrendered his life to you, and here are the students sitting ready to hear what you have deposited into his life. As he empty himself, that the glory of God will fill the place and it's already here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless you, sir. Thank you. Bless you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Yes, good evening, everybody. Hi. I, I, I hope you've been re reading your notes. Yeah, there's a test coming later. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> huh? Good evening, everybody online. Yes. Ah, hello, Arnold. Yeah. Hello, <laughs> Sister Joan, and uh, yeah, and my brother there. Yeah, my Kenyan brother. Yes, sir. And uh, my Kenyan sister Judith. Good evening. All right. Okay. So today uh, we're going to we're still talking about the gifts of tongues, mm -hmm. and uh, you remember what we were talking about last time. <coughs> So, different types of tongues. Different types of tongues, that's right. Uh, Anda, we just, just a minute. It's too low when you stand there, it's too low. Let's take that one, Pastor Gabriel, please. That's what? Yeah. Uh, that's better, I think. That's much better. That's much better? Let me just draw this closer to it. Here we go. I'll just lift this microphone up. Okay. Okay. Then that goes there. Is that alright? Right? Yeah, that's uh, that's better. Much better? Yes, much better. Yes. So there we go. Okay. So last time we were talking about different uh, kind of tongues. That's right. Um, any anyone can can anyone remember remind us anything else they remember from last lesson brother arnold four yeah, well, as it four times, times. i think arnold is go on arnold i can hear you now yeah, there's tongues for self-edification mm -hmm. and that's the only one that you can self-initiate that's right yeah that's the one that's the one you initiate uh, by yourself as a believer. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Brother Arnold and Mama Desiree. You were adding on to that? Yeah, the other one is tongues for public assembly. Tongues for public yeah. assembly. That yeah. Means interpretation. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, that's two. You got that two more? That, um, that leads to deep groaning of the spirit. Mm. That's the third one, yes. And the fourth one? Tongue that presents itself as a sign to the unbeliever. Perfect. Yeah, that's right. So looks like we've been reading our notes. So well done, everybody. Well done. So today we'll be continuing with the personal edification. We'll be finishing up on that. There's a small amount that there's a, a, a bit there that we need to make sure that we have covered. Yeah. All right. Okay, so just to remind us where we are um you know at the moment we've been learning about the gifts the nine gifts of the holy spirit and of course while we're studying these things of course we're asking ourselves questions you know am i seeing these gifts being manifested around me are we seeing these gifts being manifested Amen. in the church right now yes sir. Amen. you see that's that's the potent question although we are start we are studying we're not studying you know, we're not just putting knowledge. We want to be able to apply it. We need to be able to see it uh, happen. You know, so um, we're keeping the law, so we are safe. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So now the question is: These gifts are we seeing them in operation? Every single one of them. That's a question we need to ask uh, uh, ourselves. If we're not seeing them in operation, then what's wrong? What's going on? Because we need to see them, you know, because God has already made them available. They're gifts. God says I do, he does not withhold a good thing from us. You know, he's already given them to us. So we need to be seeing them manifested. The question is, how come we are not seeing every one of them manifested? 
we have historical accounts of you know revival for example i think the most recent one most most are familiar with is in america i think it, went, it was in the 60s you had azusa street and then you also had um, america yeah, in the 60s as well where you had a lot of uh, manifestation of gifts of faith gift of healings people being raised from the dead so this this was something that was happening a, a lot around that time you know and we read that and we're like wow wow you know but god does not uh those guys are no more special than we are you know they're no more special than we are if they saw that manifested in their time and we are the same children of god with the same holy spirit we need to see it manifested in our time as well and we are studying this so that we can build our faith up because faith comes through hearing and hearing the word of god and as our faith is increasing as we hear it then we need to do something because faith without action is dead we need to do something now the question is what is that something we need to do now i have an account here of uh, someone who was who experienced the revival around those time and they get they got to see all the gifts of the holy spirit you know in operation on a regular basis you know people coming off wheelchairs you know mm-hmm. and leaving the wheelchairs in the church you know you have a storage space for wheelchairs mm-hmm. people come in with them but they don't live with them you know that's yeah. what that's what god's will is you know and many more manifestations and uh he 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 saw that but the important thing which is relevant to us is this person saw it before it happened so we can almost say that he has been in the same situation as we have been where uh, he was in a point where he wasn't seeing these things being manifested on a daily basis mm-hmm. we're in that situation right we're not seeing these things being manifested on a regular basis mm-hmm. and this person ha- has been there where we are and he has seen the, re- the the manifestation you know when there was a revival and then he's been there even after when we didn't see this manifestation before now it will be good for us you know to learn from people like this uh, you know men of god like this you know just the same way you know the word of god is given to us you know for our benefit so that we can learn so the person i'm talking about here is uh he, was, he was calls himself kenneth hagen i don't know you may have heard of him he's a man of god he used to teach um, faith uh, so the Lord, you know, gave him the assignment to teach about faith. Uh, if you want to learn more about, you can find out more about him. But, uh, you know, many of, he's written many books, <clears throat> especially about faith, authority of the believer. And um, it, this is his personal account. And, um, and this, this is 1940, 19, let's see, the, 1942. Yeah, so 1942, he was in the same position like us. That's how many years? 80 years ago. 80 years ago, they were in that position where, you know, they're like, hey, we're not seeing the gifts of healings being manifested on a regular basis. We're not seeing the gift of faith. We're not seeing crippled people being healed on a regular basis. They were in that position, 1942. This was, uh, I think it was during the war, right? Yes. So, the reason we're talking about this is we're talking about praying in the spirit and we need to understand why it's important that we are learning about praying in the spirit why is it important to pray in the spirit now i'll read the account so he says back in 1942 i was the pastor of a church in east texas towards the end of november of that year i'd get up between two and four o'clock in the morning monday through friday and go into the living room to pray for an hour now i wasn't led to do that sometimes you're led sometimes you have a leading a burden to pray in certain ways and along certain lines but i will simply pray in english to begin with and i'd say lord we thank you for all the gifts and manifestations of the spirit the three revelation gifts, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits, the three power gifts, faith, working of miracles, and gifts 
of healings and the three vocal gifts prophecy diverse kind of tongues and interpretation of tongues lord we have an ample manifestation of the vocal gifts we never have a service that doesn't have a tongue and interpretation we have an ample manifestation of the revelation gifts but it seems to me that there ought to be more manifestations of these power gifts faith the working of miracles and gifts of healings and so i pray that there will be a greater manifestation of these gifts than we've seen before now in about 15 minutes i had said everything i knew to say in english i'd be finished praying what my mind knew to pray so i'd say i trust the holy ghost who is living inside me to give me utterance to pray about this and anything else that god wants me to pray about and i'd spend the rest of the hour praying in tongues I did that day after day, five days a week, week after week, from the last two weeks of November down to the 23rd of May, 23rd of February, 1943. That's over three months. And on the 23rd day of February, the Lord began to talk to me. He said, at the close of World War II, there will come a revival of divine healing to America. Well, that revival started in 1947. And it, kept, and it became the easiest thing in the world to get people healed. I learned later that other people were led by the spirit to pray in that direction. We had no communication with one another and didn't know we were all praying for the same thing. But thank God, he answered our prayers. So that's an account, you know. Um, in his time, they had a lot of manifestation of the, the utterance gifts, you know, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, uh, what's the other one? Uh, descending of spirits? Yeah, uh, revelation. Descending of spirits. And then power gifts. Faith, gift of healings, working of miracles. And the last one? The utterance gifts. Prophecy, tongues, the first kind of tongues. And interpretation of tongues so he was saying they had they had a lot of the utterance gifts around that time 1942 and they had a lot of the the other gifts revelation gifts so they had a lot of revelation gifts and they had a lot of the utterance gifts yeah but they didn't have a lot of the power gifts so they didn't have a lot of uh, the gift of faith working of miracles and healings so he was praying about that but the most important thing is he was praying in his understanding but after that he was just praying in tongues praying in the spirit and when you when we pray in the spirit we pray according to the will of god and we don't know what we're praying for but the holy spirit he helps us to pray so all this time he was praying you know he didn't know what he was praying for and then at the end the lord told him this is what's going to be happening you know, in, uh, in a few years from now, there'll be a revival. And we know about that revival that came. And we know, we know about all the accounts that have been written about it. So this is important because, you know, that's similar to where we are right now. You know, and now we're talking about praying in the spirit. So it says desire the best gifts, but desire is in passive. It's not passive. You desire, but you have to do something about that desire. You have to pursue. And what uh, the man of God here he did is he prayed. You desire those gifts, but you have to pursue. You have to act. And the action here is faith. He prayed to the Lord and said, we're not seeing this gift. We're not seeing that gift. We're not seeing that gift. We ought to see it, you know, because that's what the word of God says. And then he will pray in the spirit. And he did that and persevered until he heard from the Lord. And the Lord answered not just his prayer, but he didn't know that other believers elsewhere were praying for the same thing. So, you know, that's what we need to learn from that. And we are learning about praying in the spirit. And this is what's going to come handy when we are praying for these gifts. Yeah, so we need to pray for the gifts, but we also need to pray in the spirit about it as well. 
yeah so that we can see the manifestation of these gifts yeah <coughs> yeah so this is just to show us where we are so last time we talked about um praying in tongues for personal edification yeah and we said according to first corinthians 14 4 we're not going to open open that uh, but we talked about uh, we pray so that we can edify ourselves, so that we can build ourselves up, so that we can develop ourselves, so that we can, another word is fortify ourselves, build ourselves up on our most holy faith. So that means your faith doesn't remain the same, your faith grow, grows, you're strengthening yourself in faith. And then we also talked about um, how often should we pray in tongues? Always. Always. Because there's the word of God, 1 Corinthians 14, 15, that says, I pray in the spirit and also in the understanding. Yeah? And then we said another reason for us praying in tongues is we do not know what we ought to pray for. So it's an infirmity, it's a weakness, not knowing what to pray for. But the Holy Spirit knows exactly what we ought to pray for. And we, we said the word helps is uh, Greek for, sun, uh, we said that, that name, sunanti. Sunantila ba nomai helps. He helps our infirmities. So that helps. If you look at the original word for Greek, it means someone helping you, cooperating with you. So, for example, the way we carry that table from there to there, you know, it's the job is easier when two people are carrying it. Yeah. So when you're praying in tongues, it's like you carrying this table with the Holy Spirit. He's helping you to pray. And for him, he will never pray amiss because he knows what God's perfect will is for you and for the people you're praying for. So he helps you to pray according to God's perfect will. And you know, there's a verse that says the effective prayer of a righteous man availeth much. How is your prayer going to be effective? If you pray in the spirit, your prayer will definitely be effective because you're praying according to God's will. It will avail much. And in this case, we had an example. The availing match there was revival. The manifestation of the gifts of faith, of working of miracles, of healings. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about also, so we've talked about edification, that is your faith. We've talked about um, so that you can pray according to God's will. That's another reason why you pray in the spirit. A third reason you pray in the spirit is for your personal relationship with God to develop your relationship with God, to develop intimacy with God. So 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Bless you. Almost there. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 2, yes, that's correct. Whoever is there can read. For oh, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Speaketh not unto men, mm -hmm. but unto God. For no man understandeth him. However, in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Amen. That's correct. Okay. Let's see. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Speaketh not unto men, but unto God. So who is he speak to? when we pray in a known tongue? Who are we speaking to? We're speaking to God. That's right. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries? So there's two things. This person is not speaking to man, he's speaking to God. The second thing in that verse is he's speaking mysteries. So when you pray in an unknown tongue, you're speaking to God and you're also speaking mysteries. So you're speaking mysteries to god so when you pray in a non, a non time you're speaking mysteries to god you're speaking mysteries to god you're ministering to god you're ministering to god there is a verse that says i think um, i don't know whether i can find it it says uh, i think uh, you you know when you pray in the spirit you praise you bless well i don't know whether we can find it pray in the spirit you bless well so when you're praying in the spirit you can be blessing the lord as well 
So you're ministering to him. Let me find that. Yeah, I think First Corinthians. Uh, Ah, yes, First Corinthians chapter 14, I believe from 14, 14 to 19. First Corinthians 14? Yes, First 14 Corinthians 19. 14 to 19, yes. Yes, to 17, yeah. 14 to 17, yeah? 14 to 17. Yes. 14. Okay, it says, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing in the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks since he does not understand what you say so you see even in the spirit you can be giving thanks to god for you indeed give thanks well but the other is not edified so yes people here praying in the spirit and as they're praying in the spirit they're blessing the lord they're giving thanks to the lord although you might not understand it and the person next to you might not understand it but you're not speaking to men, you're speaking to God, you're speaking mysteries to God, you're blessing the Lord, you're giving thanks to him as you pray in the spirit. So praying in the spirit is one way you can develop your intimacy with God, Deve develop your relationship with God, you know, get closer, draw nearer to me and I'll draw nearer to, to you, you draw nearer to him, you speak, you say, when you speak heart to heart, you know, that's intimacy, you're speaking something no one understands it, but God understands it. It's intimate. You know, it's just between the, the two of you. Not your understanding, but your spirit and him who is spirit. You're a spirit man. He is spirit. It's spirit to spirit. You're speaking spirit to spirit to God. And you're blessing him. You're praising him. You're speaking mysteries to him. Yeah? So that's one way you can develop your uh, relationship with God. You know, so you don't pray in the spirit is not just when, you know, you don't, we don't just pray in the spirit when we're in trouble, you know, we, 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 you know, we can just go and pray in the spirit and we bless the Lord, you know, and we just say, Lord, I just want to spend some time with you right now. And then you just pray in the spirit, you know, while you're praying in the spirit, you're speaking to him, you're speaking mysteries to him, you know, he's hearing you, you know, you know, you're blessing him, you're thanking him, you're ministering to him. You know, you're worshiping him as you pray in the spirit. So it doesn't mean that every time we go praying in the spirit, you're saying, oh, I'm going with an agenda. Ah, things are not going so well. Let me go praying in the spirit. It's not just then. We pray always, you know, always. We're not saying I need a reason to go and pray in the spirit. I can pray in the spirit anytime. You know, I can just be walking on the street going to Tesco and I can pray in the spirit on my way there. You know, so praying in the spirit is you developing your relationship with God, yeah? Spending time with God. We spend time in the God in, in the word, but we also spend time with him in prayer. But when we pray, we're not just coming to the Lord to ask for things. We can be ministering to him, you know? We can be speaking mysteries to him, you know? That is one uh, other reason why we should pray in the spirit. And as you minister to the Lord, you're getting closer to the Lord, you know? You're drawing nearer to him. He's drawing nearer to you. And as you get to know, as you do that, you get to know him more and more. You get to become sensitive to him. You get to know his heart. You get to know his voice. You know, as you get closer to someone, then you get to know what that person likes, that person doesn't like. You know, you get to know that person. You know, that person gets to reveal themselves more to you. So as you pray in the spirit, speaking mysteries to God, the Lord is revealing himself more to you in your spirit. You get to know him more. If you're reading the word of God, revelations start coming. It's like, oh, I've read this one before, but oh my, I've never seen this one. It's like, wow, wow. Where did that come from? How did I miss that before? You know, it's God just revealing, you know, unfolding, 
the unfolding of his word gives let's look for that verse gives light let's look for that verse the unfolding of his word yeah 119 or huh? oh, 119 verses 130 uh, Psalms uh, 119, 119, verses 130, 130. Yeah? <clears throat> it says, the unfolding of your words gives light. That's a uh, New International Version. Or another version, the unfolding of your words gives light it imparts understanding to the simple you know so as we praying in the spirit and james said the yep. influence of thy words given light mm -hmm, gives mm -hmm. understanding into the simple, into the simple. Mm -hmm. to the simple that's correct so as we praying in the spirit and we're ministering to god and we're speaking mysteries to to him are we developing our relationship with him our intimacy with him he reveals more and more Seek me and you shall find me. But you go seek me with your whole heart. So that's you getting closer to God. So as you pray in the spirit, you're ministering to God. You're speaking mysteries to him. You know, you're, tell, you know, you're, you're expressing your, yourself to him even in ways that physically you cannot. You know, has God ever blessed you so much and you say, Lord, I don't even have an adjective. <laughs> I've run out of words. I don't know what to say yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I can say you're good, but I don't feel that it's enough to just express how grateful I am. You feel like that, just start praying in the spirit straight away. When you pray in the spirit, you'll give him the praise, the full package of the praise he deserves. Because the Holy Spirit will be helping you to do it. And the Holy Spirit knows exactly, you know, how to bless the Lord, how to minister to the Lord, even in ways that, physically we cannot you know with our understanding we cannot our vocabulary has its limits so pray in the spirit because you go beyond the and the limitations of the under of the human understanding yeah so that's your chance to go further in terms of how you praise the lord yes yeah, so you know when we pray first corinthians 14 14 we read that one just now and uh, it said, I don't know whether there's anybody still there who has been meditating since we left that verse. <laughs> They're still there. <laughs> First Corinthians 14, verse 14. Whoever is there can go for it. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Yes, that's it. My understanding is unfruitful. My spirit prays. My understanding is unfruitful. You have your understanding and you have your spirit, man. Yeah? Your understanding is unfruitful. Mm. You know, it's, it's been told, go sit on the steps. <laughs> you know, we're going to just pray in the spirit now. So when you are praying in tongues, you know, your mind, your mind grows quiet because your mind, you're no longer deciding with your mind what you're going to be praying next. You know, your mind go, goes quiet. Your mind is unfruitful because you're not praying out of your mind. And once you're not praying out of your mind, you can become more spirit conscious because you're no longer thinking, oh, I need to pray about this, I need to pray about that. You're completely surrendering to the leading of the Holy Spirit in your prayer. Your mind is no longer contributing to the prayer. It's just your spirit and the Holy Spirit. Your mind has been, it's almost been packed, you know? So, when we do this then we become more spirit conscious you know and we are spirit men we need to Amen. live more spiritually mm. you know you know we so the more we live more spiritually the more we grow our spirit man the more our spirit man uh, grows and the more conscious you are of your spirit man and you're conscious of spiritual things as well yeah the more conscious you become of spiritual things so that's why we're saying the more revelation you get from the Holy Spirit, the more you hear from God, the more you are able to receive instructions from God in your spirit. 
So you have this decision you need to make. You have three jobs you've been looking at. And you wonder, do I take that, that, and that? Every one of them has its benefit, good money. Or oh, this one is more flexible hours. You know? And your understanding is like, oh my, both of the, all of them, those ones are good. Both of them are good, but I don't know what to do. Pray in the spirit. That's it. Pray in the spirit. Let your understanding take a holiday for a minute. Yeah? <laughs> and, nice. Yeah? Yeah, because your understanding has its limits. And then pray in the spirit. The Lord will download into your spirit what decision you need to make. You know? You might find even one of them becomes unavailable. You know? Or the Lord reveals something about one of them and you're like, oh my, thank you, Lord. Thank you, I didn't apply. You know? Yeah, I had an example... Um, uh, you know, yeah, at work, you know, and, you know, you know, or saying, hey, you know, you've been staying in this position for a long time, you need to apply for that job, you know, they're getting paid well. And the evidence was there to say that, that people are getting paid well. And I remember I, I talked to Pastor G, isn't it, on the phone, that was during lockdown, I believe, yeah. And uh, one of my colleagues had just left my department and gone there and, yeah, he was, they were getting paid some good money, you know? It was, it was undeniable, you know? Overtime, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I was thinking about it. And everyone, everyone I meet, they're saying, hey, James, man, you need to apply for that. Talk to that one. So, so you're getting input here, left, right, and center. But then I'm, yeah, but I'm thinking, I, I don't know, you know? I don't know, you know, I'm not <laughs> sure now. <clears throat> you know? I, and I'm thinking, Lord, you know, I... It looks like the vote, everyone is voting and saying that I should apply for this job, but I don't know. I don't know what I need to, you know, apply for. I can't remember whether I prayed in tongues, but I do remember talking to the Lord about it, you know, and I told him I'm not sure about it, you know. Um, and, you know, every time that came up, I would just say, you know, Lord, you know, I'm just waiting on you. You show me, you know, whether I should apply for it. And then three months or a few months after that, you remember that department, I'm not going to mention it because this is, uh, is online. Mm. Yeah, that department uh, basically got halved. Wow. wow. It got halved. Mm. And the half that remained, some of them were told you have to go work in another country. Yeah. We're given two choices of two countries. And then a very small amount stayed here. You see? So... <clears throat> Oh my. Wow. Thanks be to God. Thank, thanks be to God for that. Praise God. Oh wow. Wow. That's so true actually. Yeah. So praise praise God for that. It's a lighting, you know, it's a lighting. It's a lighting, yeah, so. <laughs> oh my. But thanks be to God, you know. So, thank, thanks be to God, you know, for that I didn't apply for it, you know. So, sometimes, you know, you are, you know, you, are, you can be, you know, you cannot know what decisions to make, you know. You need to pray in the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will lead you, you know. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to act and react and... You know, we don't need to react. There's no time limits and something comes up and God say, oh, you have three days to respond. Come on, come on, come on. God is not putting people under pressure like that. If there's Never. anyone putting you, Never. if you see that, you don't, that's not from God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God does not say, oh, yeah, you need to apply. That job is going. You know, God could make that job available. Without applying for it. Without even applying for it. People could come for you. Absolutely. Asking for you. Yeah. And say, yeah, we've been looking for someone like you. God can do that. So we should never rush into anything. You know, we should never rush into anything. It's better just run and pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. And then the Lord will reveal to you in one way or another. Yeah? What decision you need to make. So that's one reason we need to be praying in the spirit. You become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You become more spirit led. You know, remember the word of God say, those led by the spirit are the sons of God. We, we started as children, we need to be mature sons of God, led by the Spirit, you know, not led by our emotions, led by our understanding, you know, we are, 
led by the Holy Spirit. So our spirit man needs to develop. If our spirit man develop, then it's not, we're not led by our understanding. You know, the spirit man can say, hey, we're not, we're not going that way. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the Lord has said X, Y, Z, oh, the Lord hasn't told me anything about that. So I don't, I'm not going to do any action. You know, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. While you're praying in the spirit, you're waiting upon the Lord. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not be faint. They shall soar on wings like eagles. You know, so that's it. That's how you pray. That's what you do. You pray in the spirit while you're waiting on the Lord. <clears throat> so, because I see everyone has been listening, but I wonder whether this, well, let me see what time it is first. Ah, uh, yes, I think this is a good time. Uh, actually, no. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Elect. Oh, actually, we'll wait. We'll wait for Pastor we'll wait for, we'll, we'll wait for them. We'll wait for them. Yeah? We, we, we'll wait for them. <laughs> yes, actually, I think it's, uh, we'll carry on for a bit and then we'll finish with that. Yeah? Okay. So, why, why have we been talking about tongues for personal edification? We've talked about edifying, building yourself up, strengthening yourself, fortifying yourself in your most holy faith. Yeah? Uh, and those people who go to gym, you know, it's, you know, when you're lifting weights, you know, those are good accomplishments, but your body is normally limited. You know, you can't go for 500 kilos, you know, you got to start for five kilos. But, you know, our spirits have no limitation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our body can have limitation, but our spirit, spirit man, no. has no limitation. No, no, you amen. can do all things through Christ amen. who strengthens you. That's right. That's what you're standing on. Yeah. So. So when we pray, when we pray in tongues and we're edifying ourselves, it's like being in the a good analogy as someone was using was Lord's, you're in the Lord's gym. When you're praying in the spirit, you're in the Lord's gym. You're That's building building yourself up on your most holy faith. Your faith is growing. You're gaining, you're progressing. You know, people who go to gym, they go three, four, I don't know how long it takes. Is it 12 weeks to see difference? Claire, Claire. Claire knows more about it. <laughs> four weeks, yeah? Yeah, four weeks. <laughs> so four weeks of discipline, you know, they see, you know, those benefits, the muscle has grown, you know, or whatever your, your, your target is. So the reason why am I talking about praying in the spirit and it being like the Lord's gym, building yourself up? Because it takes strength to walk with God. It takes strength to walk with God. Amen. So you need to build yourself up on your most holy faith because it takes strength to walk with God. But this is not your physical strength. Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. By my spirit, says the Lord. That's it, the Holy Spirit. You cooperating with the Holy Spirit. That's how you're going to do it. It takes strength. To walk with God. We are all called. It takes strength to walk Amen. with God. Amen. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Let's read that. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. it says we, we got there so philippians 3 12 says mm. not that i have already attained or i'm already affected this, this is paul yeah mm. not that i have already attained or i'm already perfected but i press on that i may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. We just read that last bit. For, uh, New King James. 
What does the amplifier? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. Let's listen. Let's hear. Uh -huh. It says, mm -hmm. "Not that I have already obtained it, the goal of being Christ-like, mm -hmm. or have already been made perfect, but mm -hmm. actively press on, so that I may take hold of that perfection mm -hmm. for which Christ Jesus took hold of me mm -hmm. and made me His own." Okay. Amen. Amen. That's it. Jesus Christ laid hold of us. He purchased us with his own precious blood. He's laid hold of us. But we need to press on so that we may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of us. So Jesus has purchased us with his blood, redeemed us for a reason. And the reason here is that we may lay hold of that for which he has laid hold of us. I know the wording for that New King James Version is, you know, if you, it's, it might be difficult to follow, but if you re read that, if you just read the Jesus part only, and then you go back to read the your part, it makes more sense. So Jesus has already laid hold of us. We know that. Now we need to press on so that we may lay hold of something. What is this something? The things that God has made available for us in Christ Jesus. Those things that God has made available for us in Christ Jesus. And it takes, we're still talking about Jim, yeah? It takes strength to walk with God. And it takes spiritual muscle to lay hold of those things that God has for us spiritual muscle we're not talking about pure gym here <laughs> spiritual muscle praying in the spirit building yourself up on your most holy faith the strength we're talking about that's right those who go to the gym if you go one week you don't go for three weeks that's it there's no point is there yeah there's no point you need to be consistent. You need to come up with a plan and say four weeks, five kilos weight dumbbell. Yeah? For the smallest one there is. <laughs> so you say, you know, week one, I'm just gonna be lifting the five kilo. And then weeks week five, I'm going to the is it ten? Is that seven and a half? A smaller one, next one up, yeah. She's <laughs> not that level. No, yeah, she's at eleven. Ah, two point five. Yeah. Ah, so you can start on the two point five yeah. and then go on five kilos. Yeah. So that's it. Week four weeks of two and a half. Mm -hmm. Then week five you go on the four, on the five kilos. Okay. Yeah. That's but you have to be consistent. Otherwise, if you miss one week, you might as well start again. You know, on that two and a half again. We need to develop our spiritual muscle so that we can build up our strength. We need strength to walk with God. We need spiritual muscle to lay hold of those things that God has for us. That's why Paul was talking about pressing on. He has to press on so that he may lay hold. Praying in the spirit is not the only way, but it's one of the way. We need to be spending time in the word. Can I just read this here? Yes, ma'am. says, Paul knew that he could not really reach perfection in this life. But his goal was to press on as if it were attainable. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It is attainable. That is attainable, a goal. He had a goal set in mind. Just the same way the person in the gym has a goal. You know, you know my goal is, you know, maybe not to go as Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know. But... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's not attainable, you know. I don't know about that. <laughs> so, you know, so that's what we're talking about. He's, Paul set himself a goal and he was pressing onto that goal so that he could lay hold of that. So, you need spiritual muscle to lay hold of those things God has for us. Yeah? So Jesus laid hold of us so that we can have access to certain things God has for us. God has already made these things available, but you know, we need to pursue those things. We need to press onto those things. We need to be able to achieve those things. We have to take action. 
Yeah, so we do that. We pr press on. We follow after. We pursue these things. That's how we lay hold of those things. The things that Christ has laid hold of us for. Yeah? So an example is, you know, there may be people who, you know, have been, you know, reading the Bible about the love of God and how God loves them and want to bless them with many things, you know? But some people find hard to grasp that, you know, grasp that. And as a result, they miss out on what, what God has for them, you know? They did not lay hold of it. God has already made it available. All they needed to do was lay hold of it. But how do you lay hold of something? You need faith. Faith to lay hold of it, to say, yes, my faith has grown. Of course, okay, say right now you have that sort, that sort of weakness where you're not finding it, you're finding it difficult to grasp something God has for you. One example, we talked about baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, some maybe have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And maybe some of us have not prayed in tongues. And that's something God has provided for us. You need to lay hold of it. You need to lay hold of it by faith. Yeah, by faith. So if you find yourself, you, ha you know, you have that kind of weakness where God has promised something in his word, but you're finding hard to grasp it. And as a result, you're missing out on that which God has for you. Pray in the spirit. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. As you pray in the spirit, you build yourself up on the most holy faith. Go back to that verse. Read it again. If you're still not settled, you know, if you're still not settled, pray in the spirit more. That's, where, that's how you grow your faith. You know, Paul said, I'm fully convinced, fully persuaded mm. that neither death Come on. nor life. life. No. That is somebody who has fully grasped it. Amen. That's someone who has already laid hold of something God has. He has laid hold of it. And he, as a result, is getting everything from that because his faith has grown to the point where he's fully persuaded. There's no wavering. There's no wavering. He was fully convinced of the love of God. And if we find ourselves that we are not at that point, pray in the spirit. Paul said, go on. You know, um, actually, um, what you just said now, it's the same thing that happens when it comes to preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. Remember when God said, when Jesus Christ told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. that when they receive the Holy Spirit, there will be witnesses unto them. Mm -hmm. Some people find it difficult to be bold about preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. And if you check most of the time, some people, some of them are, they have maybe not praying enough in the Holy Spirit or they've not received the Holy Spirit because even Paul says, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Mm -hmm. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. You know, sometimes when we see that we're shameful in preaching the gospel, or maybe we see people that they just say, no, 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 I can't do that. They might, be, they might even be children of God. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we need to check is, first of all, we need to ask them, we, we just diagnose, like a doctor would diagnose someone. <laughs> Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Or do you pray regularly with the Holy Spirit? Or do you understand the gospel? Because we don't mm -hmm. understand the gospel. Like the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the more you grasp, the more you hold, the more you want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I think things like that we can we can ask people. Because sometimes we might look at people who are like, like People, we've had people in church for 20 years, mm. but they're not telling, they're not talking about Jesus, they're not mm. even witnessing to anybody. Mm. But one of the promises in the scripture is that when you receive the Spirit, mm -hmm. when you feel the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you shall be witnesses unto me. That's right, yeah. So individuals should kind of like ask themselves and say, hmm. That's right. So yeah. you know, then you can if you if you have received the Holy Spirit or if you or maybe they prayed for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you've not taken the step to actually open your mouth to speak because the Bible says and the spoke as the Holy Spirit gave them a the yeah. yeah. So you have to take that step of speaking. That's right. Yeah. Open Amen. your mouth. Mm. And as you do it, and when you begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, you find that your goal, your understanding is 
the Holy Spirit is mm. helping you with your understanding, mm. and you're not ashamed to tell somebody mm. about Jesus Christ. And mm. the Holy Spirit is there to help you. Be Amen. Mature. That's right. Yeah, that's what it is. That's Amen. right. Yeah, that's right. So, Definitely. you know, that's how we develop spiritually, you know. You know, we pray in the spirit. We develop spiritually. So when you find ourselves with such weaknesses, you know, where we're not fully convinced or fully persuaded of something that God has already made available for us, because we need to get to that state where every single thing that God has for us, yeah, we are fully convinced, we are fully persuaded. Faith, yeah? So how do we deal with that, even in that situation? Of course, spending time in the Word, feeding on the Word, but also as according to Jude one twenty, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the in the Holy Spirit, you're building yourself up on your most holy faith. You have to work out your own salvation. Amen. Your faith. You, it's not every time that you can stand on someone else's faith. Amen. You know, you can stand in faith for personal. Personal. Sometimes, yeah, you stand in faith with Amen. someone. You know, you know, your brother, your sister, the pastor. But sometimes you need to stand on your own faith. Your mom can't help you. Your dad can't help you. Your friend can't help you. Your sister can't help you. Just you and the Lord. You know, we have to work our own salvation. Yeah? Yes, sir. That's right. With fear and trembling. So for those who play play games and that on their phones, you know, you get to a point where you start leveling up. Yeah? Yes. You say you need to level up. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> you know, you, you, you don't know you have... Yeah? I don't know about games. <laughs> <laughs> so you're leveling up, you know? You've, you know, you're leveling up, you've gone to another, they've given you five badges or, That's you know? <laughs> But those badges are not real. I don't do that. Yeah. I used to do that. Not anymore. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so you, let's say you get badges, you know, you get all this accomplishment. They say, yes, you are, you've got this new badge, you know, you are, you become this uh, rank now, you're f rank 50 or rank 70. And you're like, oh, wow, I'm really good at this game, you know? And, uh, but this is all just virtual. It's not real. You know, it feels gives you a sense of accomplishment, but to be honest, at the end of it, it's nothing. Yes. But there's no, goal. there's no goal. But there's a real leveling up. Come on, praying in the spirit. Amen. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. Yes, yes, yes. You're leveling up. I'm teaching good. Sir. You're leveling up. Real leveling up. You know, mm. you're leveling up in the spirit. You're building up your spiritual capacity. Come on now, come on. Building come up on. your spiritual Amen. capacity. Amen. From glory to glory. That's it. You know, that's it. You're enlarging your capacity. You're enlarging your spiritual capacity. You said it takes strength to walk with the Lord. You are increasing your spiritual capacity. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than all of you. How much spiritual capacity did he build? Wow. Praying in the spirit mm. as much as he did. That's how we do it. Spiritual capacity. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So we need to enlarge our spiritual capacity so that we can rise to a higher level in prayer. Amen. We need to level up spiritually. And this is real. This is real leveling up. And we talked about the gym. Someone, so I'll give you a practical way for this. So you might say, uh, my, my plan for gym is four weeks on two and a half kilos. After four weeks, that two and a half kilos doesn't challenge you anymore. The first day, oh, you feel the burn. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Ian understands me. <laughs> you feel the burn, you know, and you're in the gym. You don't want other people to know you're suffering. So you're, you're, you know, you're biting. What do they say? Biting your yeah. lip. You're biting your lip. You know, you're looking, you're not feeling anything, you know. And uh, after four weeks, it's too easy now. So you say, I'm going up to four, uh, five kilos. And you, you go back to step one again. But, you know, you're working other muscles now. Yeah, if you go to two and a half, you'll be like, ah, this, this is too easy. Yeah. Then you, after that, you go to 10 kilos. 10 kilos become easy, it goes to 15 kilos, you know? And some have gone even to 100 kilos, I don't know, you know? So it, your muscle is growing, is growing. Those weights are getting easier and easier. Amen. 
as you're praying in the spirit you're building up your capacity building up your spiritual capacity yeah. things you couldn't handle before now you'll be able to handle them ways that the lord wanted to use you before that he couldn't now he's able to use you in them prayers that you couldn't pray before you're praying now amen you're building up your spiritual capacity that's the lord's gym amen. praying amen. in the spirit Hallelujah. yeah awesome, awesome. Good analogy. that's right awesome, awesome. yes <laughs> so we must have progression too in our prayer life mm. so you need to train yourself up as a physical trainer normally trains an athlete now you have athlete like more far all of them you know six days a week they're running only one rest day you know so they have i don't know five days they are running uh, so i don't know three days very long distance i don't know two days a medium distance and then on six days like a jog for them a jog is like 10 kilometers you know that's an easy day they call it you know and seven days rest you know and that day maybe they're resting in the swimming pool you know getting massage on their legs and then monday is back to square one again and they do this for years that discipline that dedication and it means they miss out so many things you know just to get that gold medal and that status you know wow. now what about us come on. we have non-perishable what we are building up is not perishable those things are perishable mm. how much more should come we be on. praying in the spirit in a, dis in a disciplined way in a consistent way how much more should we be set on a goal you know like those athletes you know so how can you build yourself up so maybe at the moment you're praying for you're praying like for you know five minutes in tongues maybe that's where you are right now that's fine we have to start from somewhere that's right amen yeah but we can't stay there yeah you have to build that up just the same way you're saying two two and a half kilos five kilos mm. you need to build up five minutes okay i need to aim for let me aim seven minutes i think uh, you know five minutes seven minutes i can do that I'm not saying you time yourself, but mm -hmm. just push yourself to pray mm -hmm. longer. If you need to time yourself, do it. You know, the Lord is not going to penalize you for it. <laughs> it's all right. You know, it's okay. Mm -hmm. We're talking about discipline here. We need to, gen we need to, you know, sometimes we can be very spiritual and we forget about sometimes we have to be practical as well. Mm -hmm. We have wow. to be practical. The same way the athlete has to be wow. intentional, practical. Wow. Wow. You can't just wake up tomorrow morning and just say, ah, I'm just going to run and then I'm going to feel if i feel it's burning too much that's it for me <laughs> he just he doesn't do that mm. he, he he starts with a goal he says i'm gonna fit 15k mm. a 10k mark is his legs are burning he's like now nah, i haven't achieved my goal i'm finishing mm. this sure. i definitely finish why can't we do the same in praying in the wow. spirit praying in the spirit we can set ourselves a goal five minutes now okay seven and seven minute ten minute fifteen minute but you need to set so step one you need to set a goal you need to set yourself a goal you know where you are right now you need to train your own self to pray in the spirit set a goal and then you need to make yourself stretch past your comfort zone yeah so if you're comfortable with five minutes you need to be able to stretch yourself beyond that comfort zone step three you need to keep your goals realistic enough to prevent discouragement so if you're doing five minutes don't do don't say one hour <laughs> you'll, be, you'll become discouraged at some point because and then next time you won't want to do it you know and it's not good is it then you know then you lose your morale you know so start with five minutes put achievable goals two minutes five minutes as as you see fit so step one set goals second stretch yourself past your comfort zone but keep your goal third keep your goals realistic mm -hmm. enough to prevent discouragement yeah mm -hmm. and that's how you increase your capacity to pray in the spirit awesome that's how you increase your capacity to pray mm -hmm. in the spirit is uh i don't know whether we have experienced this sometimes you start praying in tongues and initially you feel like you're 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 speaking in tongues but you feel like you're drawing those tongues you know you are as in when someone is drawing water from a well you actually you're you're you know it's it's not just flowing it's not flowing by itself but you are intentionally doing it and that's 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 okay you gotta start from there yeah, but you have to keep at it 
keep at it. And I'm no, I know we have experienced it where you keep at it and then it gets to a point where there is a breakthrough mm. and it just like, it's just flowing and you're like, oh, I, I don't, I don't want to leave this place. I want to stay here. And you're like, oh, Holy Spirit, that's amazing. I, you're, you're thinking, you're like, oh, this is amazing. And you're just carrying on and it's just flowing. And you're like, why can't I be? And in your mind, you think, why can't I be here every time? <laughs> you know, that's when you receive an unction of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And now the, you're no longer drawing from the well. Mm. Now the spring is just blow, it's, um, springing from you. The river is flowing, Amen. you know? And you have to stay there. Don't stop. Don't say, oh, I need, I put something in the oven. (laughs) 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 Don't say you put, yeah? Just stay there, you know? Stay there, stay there, stay there. Until that point where you, you know, those springs are start leveling out. Then you know that what the Holy Spirit wanted to be prayed about, mm. it's been done. The so job true. is complete. Uh, but we need to, if we stay, if you're always doing two minutes and you stay two minutes, then you'll never push yourself to there. Mm. The woman with the, with the issue of blood, she had to push through the crowd mm. to touch the garment. You have to push, push, stay there, stay there, stay there. The unction falls. Mm. Oh, you, then you, you just keep, pray, keep, keep praying. Keep praying. After that, you just praise God. Amen. Say, wow, Lord, thank you for what you have done. Amen. Thank you for what you have accomplished through my mm. prayer. You could have been praying for yourself. You could have been praying for your brother. Mm. You could have been praying for someone you've never met mm. in a different part That's of the true. world. That's right. True. You could have been doing that. You don't know. Yes, sir. But at the end, you know, the job is complete. Amen. So when you're praying in spirit, let's keep pushing. Initially, you'll have to do that discipline mm. where you set yourself five minutes, ten minutes, whatever, ten minutes. But the more you do that, you get to that point where you receive the unction. It's no longer about discipline. Mm. It becomes more of a joy because you're like, Amen. Lord, I'm here again. I remember what you did last time. I'm here again. I'm ready to be used again. And you keep pushing and you're like, oh, Lord, thank you for using me again. Then prayer becomes a joy, you know? Amen. Prayer becomes a joy. It's no longer a chore. It's no longer, oh, I need to, you know? It's, it's a joy, you know? So... The best way, the best way before you pray in tongues is set your faith when you start praying in tongues and believe for that. Set your faith when you start praying in tongues. Number two, believe for that unction of the Holy Spirit. So so step one is set your faith. Mm -hmm. Set your faith when you start praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. So be intentional when you start praying in tongues. Number two, believe for that unction of the Holy Spirit. Believe for that unction of the Holy Spirit. An unction I've already described. When you're praying and these tongues are just flowing off of you, you pray until you achieve that breakthrough. Most of the time we pray, and we're like, I think that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you go, you know? But pray, pray, pray. Keep pushing until you achieve that breakthrough until you achieve that breakthrough. So you keep praying. So set your faith, believe for that unction, Mm -hmm. and keep praying until that unction comes. That's how you cooperate with the Holy Spirit when you're praying in tongues. Yeah, so we've come to the end of praying in, um, uh, praying for personal, praying in tongues for personal edification. We talked about edification, one reason. And number two is praying according to God's will. Mm -hmm. And we talked about intimacy, developing your relationship with God. So edification, Mm -hmm. that is building yourself up, increasing your spiritual capacity. Number two, praying according to God's will. Mm. You could be praying for yourself and other people. That prayer is definitely effective. It's definitely answered. Mm -hmm. Three, intimacy. Developing relationship with God by speaking mysteries to God. That way you you become more spirit conscious and you are in tune with the Holy Spirit. You are led more by the Holy Spirit. You know God's will more. You receive more revelations. You get to know God's voice more. So those are three reasons for praying 
and personal edification. Yeah, so in the interest of time, I'm not going to give the questions. Yes! <laughs> 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 but yeah, we'll be praying over next week. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we thank the Lord. I don't know whether there's any question. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. Come on, put our hands together. Wow. We will bless her. We will bless her. We, we thank God for your life. We give God the praise and the honor. Amen. Stretch our hands to our deacon. Father, we thank you for this teaching that you have laid upon his heart and even where the church is going. We thank you for the anointing upon his life, O Lord. Pray that you continue to fill him up. Amen. Continue to guide him. That promotion is coming. Amen. That breakthrough is coming. Amen. Uncommon favor is coming. Amen. Lord, you're already working the hearts of men and women because of your son and this vessel that is standing here. We've been blessed. I've been blessed. We've been blessed. Continue to bless him, Father. Amen. Even his relationship, even his marriage, Amen. Lord. The plans, even his graduation. Lord, we pray continuous blessing. Amen. That there will be a spring of living waters yes. upon his life. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We will bless her. We will bless. Thank you, Thank Thank you so much. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that you were blessed like we were blessed here. Wow. We thank God for our teachers in the house. Amen. We have been blessed. And so I thank you for watching us. Uh, may God bless you too. Let us be upstanding. We just sing a chorus and then we close in a time of prayer. Hallelujah. Pastor Gibbs. Give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy. Can you close us in a word of prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father and our God, mm, Amen. You. Thank you, Lord. Lord we thank you for your word. Hallelujah. We thank you for the seeds of mm. our word, God. Father, for they are life. Amen. Father, Jesus, you said your word is life. Amen. Father, as we go out into the world, mm. may we continue to speak those words. Yes, Lord, in large our territory. Father, mm. I pray that each of our souls Hallelujah. Father, may the manifestation Amen. of the Amen. Yes. happen now in, in this Jesus area, name. in this town, Amen. and in the body of Christ. Mm. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, help us continue mm. to minister to us, Holy Spirit. Right now. As we have heard this word, as we've heard Thank you for this word. Teaching. Thank you for this teaching Lord, tonight. Lord, help us to apply it. Mm. Help us to build Be glorified. ourselves. Lord God, through the Holy Spirit, yes, that our yes, faith yes. may be increased, mm. that our faith may be increased. Hallelujah. O oh Lord God, that we may mm. speak in tongues Amen. for the unbeliever. Hallelujah. Just be everything you want us to Amen. be. Amen. Will be done, Almighty God. Every individual yes. person here may you minister to them in Jesus' name. Father, even for our youth, for yes. our children, yes. Lord, as they have heard it, yes. they were doing other things. The anointing Lord, rest upon us, them. on them, oh, Father, and the school, you, universities, colleges, workplaces, the glory of God. We thank you, we praise mm. you for the freedom we have to gather Amen. together. Amen. Our brethren, brothers, and yes. sisters in Christ, oh God, mm. we thank you that you have brought us to this time. For you decide when men shall live and the boundaries of which you will put to the Lord. We thank you and praise you and worship you in mm. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let us do the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. I am the head and not the tail. I am armed and dangerous, unstoppable and unmovable with the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, no weapon that is formed against me all my family shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me, all my family in judgment, we shall condemn. This is the heritage of the children of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Shalom. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Have a good week further. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you, and take care. See you later. Bye-bye.